Hi there. I'd like to welcome to you. I've got a, a good friend of mine and somebody that I've worked with for many years and um, have a huge amount of respect for, uh, Peter Southworth. Peter, I, I, you know, I can remember working with him, gee, it must have been 91, 92. My first shoot that I did was for margarine in a restaurant in Stellenbosch. I don't know, Pete, if you ever remember that that shoot, I think it's when you were hunting school. Yes, very well. It was many, many years back in game. Back uh, no, we just, we, um, we actually just started our own agency then, or that was with the Gap. Was it with the Gap? That yeah. was for, uh, yeah, it was uh, Montali cheese. I, I often joke about that because there's quite an interesting uh, story to it. But you, you carry on, I'll, I'll get back to it. Anyway, guys, as I was saying, we, we, Peter and myself are going to have a chat and we're going to just talk about the industry, talk about his experiences that he's had um, over the years in the industry and what he's doing now and, and try and give us some advice and especially to some of those of you that are mostly reaching retirement age, how to deal with it and, and how to keep, keep, you know, up to date with, with what's happening. So, Peter, I think, yeah, I mean, let's finish off that story you started. Yeah, it's well. I, I, if I get back to just uh, you, you and I, um, the funny thing is, Malcolm and I both grew up in Lesotho, and um, both went to Hilton College and didn't know each other over that period. Um, we only got to sort of know each other in Cape Town when we started working together, um, and discovered all these great insights. Because I remember his dad very well because he used to visit our neighbour. Um, I mean, we were always uh, lo laughing and joking with him and. Um, he, my dad ran the airline services, which was a charter company, and uh, um, Malcolm's dad ran the pottery. So it was, it was, they were, they were all good friends, and it was oh, beautiful days, if I remember. Oh, I'll tell you a, very, a quick funny story it was from, from the pottery days was, um, when I matriculated at Hilton, we all went on this, uh, what they called a student tour, and um, <clears throat> We were supposed to learn a lot about the history and uh, we, we went to seven European country, countries over seven weeks uh, to, to get an education. Well, there were six Hilton boys and 28 uh, girls from the different schools in Durban. So we, I think we learned more about certain other parts of life than the actual history of Europe. <laughs> but in this one pub um, in Switzerland was this beautiful big, we drank out of these big pottery mugs. I mean, they were like about 750 mil Mugs. And being a student at the time, I thought, um, I've got to take this mug home with me. And uh, so I put it under my jacket. And of course, it came back with me to Lesotho. And one day my dad thought, and he said, where did you get that mug? And I said, no, that's um, the one I brought back from Switzerland, from this bar. And he said, have you looked underneath? So I said, no. So he's, I looked underneath and it said, made in Lesotho by Colonyama Potteries. <laughs> so that was hysterical. <laughs> It's absolutely amazing. I'm all the way home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's funny you talk about that. My dad, had, yeah. my dad had a funny story about that as well. Um, he, he was totally fluent in Sasutu. He had studied it at university and um, he was in New York with my mom and they were going up a lift and um, another couple got in the lift next to them, a, a Sasutu couple. And um, they started speaking in, in, in Sasutu amongst themselves. And then my dad replied to them back in Susutu in New York. And I think this, this couple, he has a white man speaking Susutu in New York to me. What is going on? So yeah, what, what, it's amazing how, far, yeah. how small the world was even in those days. Um, and now yeah. it's even smaller. Um, yeah, and, and talking about that, Pete, um, you, were, you were started in the, the sort of, as we say, the heady days of advertising, you know, where things were just a little bit crazier, I think, than they are now. And it's changed a hell of a lot. I mean, how did you find those changes? I mean, wh what do you think of how things are now to what they were in those, those early days when they were just a bit crazy, I think? Yeah, that's very interesting, Malcolm. I'm, I'm, I was thinking about it after our, our little chat yesterday, and I'm very happy that I went through the, the kind of 1970s, 80s years of um, especially the British advertising played a big influence on us. I mean, those beautiful billboards. Um, I mean, I couldn't wait to get to London just to walk around and look at the billboards, let alone all the other, other attractions that the city offered. But you had the grace of, um, I was thinking back that uh, we had the first ban on cigarette advertising in, 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 in London and England. And um, they started putting out those sort of um, 
beautiful billboards that were quite um, abstract and one had to spend quite a bit of time looking at them, working out what the message was. But you had the greats of, of Hegarty, um, Alan Waldy was the art director on that particular campaign. Um, Alan Waldy, uh, David Abbott, all these kind of guys, were, it, it was the height of, 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 of great sort of subtle, uh, intelligent advertising. And I think um, I, I'm very lucky to have gone through that period because as you say, there have been major changes. Um, and, and, I, and I suppose there's so many stories around, you know, the, the, the traditional sort of advertising agency has, has kind of disappeared and it's um, a whole new world of where, where, I think the big change is now with, with as, as you say, is with the internet and, and what would I have done with that um, without it, like working at home? Um, I kind of sort of did my bit and thought I would move on and then got offered a, a lecturing post, which I thought was an, a great way to round off a career, um, putting back into advertising what, what I'd learned. And so I had those four years at uh, Red and Yellow. Um, and I really, really enjoyed working with young minds and um, just young folk that were, that were, that were sort of interested in getting on in the business. And I think a lot of what I had learned and my basics and that sort of background, they found it fascinating because, um, you know, you have this whole new world of digital space um, and, yeah. and, and, and combining sort of my experience of what I knew about the business and what combining that with um, the new things happening uh, was a great formula. Um, and it made me realize that this is so much to learn all the time. Um, so I got to a point where uh, it got quite sort of uh, um, the, the academic world was taking over and obviously Red and Yellow had to move into a more academic space. And um, I was just more, more, more interested in, in, in advertising rather than trying to uh, work out how to structure um, diplomas. And it, it got quite academic. I had to actually learn, start learning how to, dis, how to structure um, um, uh, degrees, uh, which wasn't really my field. Yeah. So I sort of, that was at the point where I, I thought I would retire and go to Hermanus and paint. But um, obviously that was, that was a, bit of a, a, a bit of a blue sky dream, but I, which is what I still do. But I, I think, and, and the one lesson and, that I learned, and I think one thing that I can uh, pass on to, on to youngsters is that you know, in this business, you, it's, it becomes your life. You don't, you don't ever leave it. Um, so you don't retire. You just find new avenues of, of, of exploration and, and, and keeping in touch. And I think what I learned in an earlier uh, time of my life was um, to be curious. And I think that's, I would say, is key to, to, to most people in, in, in this type of business is to be curious. Yeah. Um, because it's that curiosity that keeps you going. So like if I go down to a restaurant and I look at the menu and I think, ooh, you know, I could do this menu a lot better. Um, speak to the owner and say like, you know, we could get involved in some design work here, adds value to the business, uh, makes people more interested. And they're going, oh, well, sure, give it a shot. You know, then you open a bottle of wine and you look at the label and you go, wow, wow um, not such a great label. Find out who the winemaker is, um, make some suggestions. So it's that kind of curiosity all the time. It's like everything around you. You go to the garage and there's a bad sign outside their little store, you know, um, like handwritten for something that's quite technical or something too technical for something that's homemade. So you, you're constantly, you think constantly you, uh, questioning um, all forms of communication. Do you think, do you think it, was, it's it keeps a, me busy? Um, you think that while we're sort of talking about that and, and, and doing it, that, that maybe we're bombarded with so much information now that sometimes you get almost information overload that people don't look as, as curious as maybe what they used to be. I say that to a lot of my students and, and guys who I've worked with over the years in photography is I say, do you guys ever look? Do you look at the light? Do you look at how the light's falling? Do you look at a composition or do you, do you, do you look at an interesting story? Um, and they're not. They just seem to be rushed i don't know if they're just learning too much or if there's too much information 
Yeah, I, that, I, oh, that, that's, that's a very good point, uh, Malcolm. I, I think there is just, what I've found is there's just so much um, information that it's, one has to discipline one, oneself. Uh, one of the things about that people will learn now, and I'm sure they're discovering it, learning it, and um, being locked down. Um, I mean, I've had to be work from my dining room table for the last five years. So I'm kind of used to, one's got to discipline oneself. Um, you know, even if it's as simple as getting up in the morning at the same time, getting dressed, or well, having a shower, having a shave, getting dressed, sitting at the table, working, taking a lunch break, working in the afternoon, having a tea break, and then maybe stopping at the end of the day, because otherwise it does just, you know, with the internet, somebody's awake all the time. <laughs> so you're no longer confined to, like, if I think back, I mean, I wouldn't phone a client before sort of half past eight because I, that, I knew that would give him time to get into the office. Um, I, can, I can visualize him making a cup of coffee. Okay, now I'll give him a call. Whereas nowadays, it's, I mean, you have to put your phone on silent at night because suddenly there's this bing, 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 bing all night. Somebody's communicating. Somebody's talking to you from somewhere. Um, and then, as you say, all the information platforms, um, whether it's Biz Community or Fast Company or Campaign Magazine or just putting out, I mean, there's so much coming out now um, on, on what, on, on how your business can survive under these conditions, you know, and then every day it is, there's something about what's the best way of using social media. I I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've get five or six articles on how's the best way to use social media every day, you know, and you're kind of thinking like, okay, well, which one is right? <laughs> and then you get like, well, which one is real? You know, because then, <laughs> Because in between good. that comes all this um, information. I mean, I've just watched a clip of um, a leopard walking with two cubs down a dirt road, supposedly in Yonkers Hook, Stellenbosch. Five minutes later, that same clip is uh, outside Pretoria. And then five minutes later, that same clip is coming from somebody in um, Namibia. You know, so yeah, it's, you, it's you a just fascinating don't... time yeah. to... Um, but what, what is real? Because I was also thinking, like, you know, maybe we're getting to a point. I'm getting off the subject, but we can get back onto it. Uh, yeah. We're getting to a point where I was looking out the window now and there's nobody outside. But if I go and watch a TV program, there's everybody kissing and hugging and having a party. And I think, like, well, maybe we're going to get to a point where we actually have to watch TV to see what life was like. Because it's, it's, it's definitely uh, yeah. going to be different. Absolutely. So, I mean, this whole time is, 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 is very stressful. Yeah. And I think people are going to have to learn a new way of doing things. Yeah, well, it's quite, it's quite, well, there again is an opportunity because, um, you know, I suddenly um, thought, you know, if we're looking at the tourism has been hit, um, airlines and travel, and um, so I just wondered what our local tourist board's doing, you know, so I made a few inquiries and um, made some suggestions and, and they, they are, are, are kind of falling on fertile ground because now people are coming back and saying, hey, that's a good idea. We never thought about that. Um, you know, we do have an agency, but uh, yes, it's such a lack of idea. I can't not do it. It's, it's, uh, and, uh, it's fascinating. I mean, that's how the business has become. It's like, and maybe it's, it's, it's a bad thing. Like sometimes I don't think there's enough loyalty. Um, but um, unfortunately, going forward, it's going to be the idea that counts. Where it comes from, what its source is, is, is not going to be that important. Because if, if it's great content that's going to be so important to making a client's business work, they, they're going to want it. So I find that quite fascinating. You, know, um, you suddenly have access to a lot of people that you wouldn't have had access to you know, by, by using the different platforms. Well, I find that I find that in this time that that while um, you know I've set up this platform to discuss things with people and to you know like we're doing these chats and you know I have, I've sort of we've you know haven't chatted in maybe a year or so and you know Ross is somebody that I haven't spoken to in a long time and and um, Daryl and all these people that I'm actually contacting and the new people that I'm also contacting to bring on onto the show so yeah it's opening up a huge a huge amount of um, yeah, people that I can talk to, new people and new ideas and new things, so which which is really great. Um, Peter, I just yeah. want to, you know, going back to you, just back to where we were earlier. Yeah, sorry. If you, think of, if you think of the advertising world, and and I and I go back to when my very first time I got into advertising, which is in 1983. I, I went to um, 
Bates Wells in those days. And I spent um, just two weeks seeing if advertising was something I wanted to get into. And I, I went on a shoot and I preferred the photography to the advertising. But the interesting thing was when I went into the agency, everybody was so specialized. You had your lithographer. You had your um, person who was a finished artist who literally just did typesetting. You'd have in your creative guys and things. Do you think that, that, that we're missing that now? Or do you think it's quite a good thing that you just got people who can do everything? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think I, th I think it was a good thing at the time, um, especially when I look at a lot of, uh, especially little things like typography layout. Um, it's there, there seems to be quick uh, solutions and templates and things that guys can use now. But I mean, I remember spending absolute hours over six lines of body copy. Yeah, making making sure that the sentence breaks and the thought, the thoughts in each line, um, and then having to actually write each letter um, to make sure that the length of the line and working in pikers and M's and stuff that uh, I don't know if they still do, um, that there was a lot of crafting. But I mean, there are still obviously the, the guys that are, that are into crafting their work, but um, I think it was quite a good, good, good idea that there were these structures. Uh, and that everybody took responsibility for for their um, for, for for their input, you know. Um, yeah. Especially yeah. in the typography, a lot, I think a lot of that's that, that that's gone down, gone gone down the tubes. The, the, sometimes you find now the type goes down just in a big chunk, so it's like a it's it almost becomes a visual element rather than a considered um, line by line by line by line, and, and where the thought breaks are, and where the new thoughts come in, and. Um, you know, especially in London, was that um, when it came to body copy, that the body copy was actually put out to pitch. So um, the copywriter would 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 send the copy to three different print houses and say, uh, "How do you recommend setting this, and in what font?" So it was it was fascinating. Um, those, those kind of skills, you know. Unfortunately, I think as as Ross was saying, and what I've had to learn now, unfortunately. Uh, we have to kind of learn um, learn the basics of, of most of the fields, you know. I mean, I've been writing quite a bit. I've been doing layouts, um, uh, coming up with a concept. So, look, there is an advantage that you can do everything, but I think the danger is that then anybody can get involved. So even if they're not skilled in their, their different area, they can put together, they can write the copy, take the picture um, and, and, and put something down, you know. Um, and often I've, I've looked at stuff and I said, yeah, but my, uh, my wife did that, you know, I quite like it. <laughs> so, well, she's not really skilled um, in this field, but I mean, she has the, the technology is an enabler. I still think there's got to be the idea um, and the sound stra strategy, of course, you know, it's got to have a sound strategic uh, thought behind it. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And, and, um, yeah. So it is interesting that, yeah, I think, uh, go back to your question, it was great to have those, the, the opportunity to work with people that were skilled in a certain discipline. Um, but I, 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 I think the way it's going is that, you know, everybody, you know, technology being the enabler, everybody has an opportunity to to, if, if you can master all the skills and put it down, then, you know, I think, um, I think that's the way it's going to go. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And Peter, so you, you, we were chatting yesterday and you, you, you were telling me a story about how um, you, you work um, when you're talking to people and it's just a voice call and people don't pick up oh, your, yeah. voice, your, your actual age or anything. And then you arrive in a boardroom and there's a, you know, a group of 20 somethings who are all, there or early thirties and, and suddenly you come in there and they're not expecting that. And yeah, just, and, and it was just such an interesting story. How you, I think it was an actual event that happened. I think it, yes, it tells a little bit about it. It's very interesting. I mean, I've always been concerned or, 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 or keen on, and I suppose it's part of the industry and most creatives are, is the relationship between the visual and the sound. Um, and I always go back to, um, of Kubrick, that there were a few things in my life that were, were, were stepping stones. It was 2001 Odyssey, 
um, Blade Runner, um, Rollerball, and then probably um, The Deer Hunter. And I always remember those as moments in my life that said something. But if you, if you go back to um, Kubrick, when he, when he had these like spacey pictures, um, the natural tendency was for the music guys to have modern music. And he walked in and he said, hang on a second, let's put some classical music to this modern picture. And the movie changed. It just thumped. It was just made it so more powerful to have a buff behind this like really spacey cinematography. So uh, that that has been key. And so that's that whole connection between um, has been very important to me. And that, that funny story was like, um, when I used to answer the phone you know, in the days when the landline rang more than the cell phone, um, I used to answer the, cell, the, the landline and say, hi. And somebody would say, uh, hi, can I speak to your mom, please? And I'll say, yeah, okay, I'll call her. And then the person on that phone would say to Orita, oh, I didn't realize Robert was home. She'd say, no, 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 that wasn't Robert, that was Peter. So there was this misunderstanding um, of who the person was because the voice sounded so young. And working from home was, was a lot of that, that they'd hear the voice and I'd speak to them on the phone and they, they're presuming they're gonna meet this kind of 22 year old and this 67 year old guy walks in and they go, oh shit, <laughs> not what I expected. What does he know? <laughs> so what does he know? Um, so that, that was quite interesting. I found that very funny that um, it comes back to, um, uh, maybe that's the beauty of working from home. I can put the video off, but, um, it comes back to, it, it, it all boils down to, you know, what's the strategy, what's the thought, what's the idea, um, that's the important thing. Um, so for those youngsters that are getting old, um, not to worry, because there's a future. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, and then, you know, those, there are a lot of guys, and it's actually quite interesting, you know, it seems to be people are moving out of the industry in the mainstream or the, the, the top agencies a lot younger, or maybe I'm just getting older. So I don't know which one, yeah. but they, it seems like your top creatives are, you know, it's, it was at their 60s and now it's their 50s and even their 40s where they're starting to move out and being replaced by younger, younger people. So there's quite a lot of people in the industry and, uh, you know, where's the space for them now? Yeah, it's going to get crowded. Um, I think like most things. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, there are, if I think of all the youngsters coming in, um, but you know, new blood, I've, 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 I've always thought it was a good thing because, um, and one thing I learned when I ran an agency was, you know, always hire people that are more intelligent than you. Um, and that's the only, that's the only way to make it grow and, and to build it. So, look, I mean, the more people come in and the more ideas there are, the, the, the more exciting it will be. Um, are, where, where are the younger guys that are leaving going? I'm not too sure. Um, a lot of them are going into... Uh, joining their clients, I think. Um, and that, that, that to me has always been a worry. I mean, I've looked at uh, uh, big corporates that have gone so-called in-house and kind of lost a lot of direction, you know. Um, yeah, I agree with you. We were talking about a certain client yesterday. And yeah, it's, um, and I've seen it in a couple of, 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 of big corporates where, um, it's, uh, you know, and then the analogy to me was like, I love cooking, so I, I, I start cooking something at home, and um, then you're tasting it, tasting it, tasting it, and it's pretty good. And then um, I'll say to my wife, uh, well, you'll go, oh, I think it needs salt. Uh, something I wouldn't have picked up because I'm constantly tasting it. Just that outside input takes a very nice meal one step up into a great meal. By getting that outside contribution and 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 and, and advice and an insight, or, or even if it's the taste, like it's having that outside input, I think is vitally important. Um, because otherwise, you know, what it's like when you're working for yourself. You you, it's like yourself. I remember we discussed it one day by putting a portfolio of pictures together. You know, rather than do it yourself, you get somebody else to make a selection. Because you'll always choose what you think's nice, but it might not be nice to somebody else. But if yeah. you get an outside person to select those photographs, you get a far stronger portfolio. Yeah. Um, so yeah, right. that, was, that was that was a keen bit of interest to me. That um, yeah, look, I think it is. It's you know the hours and the time and that. Um, I think it is very much a young person's business. Um, 
Yeah, and I agree with you. And I think, yeah, and I think, yeah, it's a, it's a very good point. But Peter, I just want to move across now because behind you, yeah. I see there are a couple of pictures, and I know some of them are yours or all of them. Are, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that that's 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 your hobby career now that you're painting, and how's that going? In the painting, it's something I uh, thought I would do full time, but obviously, as we were saying earlier, it's 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 a bit of a hobby, and I still like in, I still enjoy getting involved in in, in cracking some. The thing is about art is there's just so much out there and uh, online galleries um, and to see the, the amount of work and the beautiful work that's out there, mm. it's quite daunting. But um, I think one's got to just plow, you know, you can't call the people all the time as the old saying goes, but um, if you develop a style and a look and a feel, um, you, you get a following and people recognize your work and, and, and start to collect it and and enjoy it. So yeah, it's a, it's it's quite frustrating. It's nothing more scary than a blank canvas. Um, and just to get going and 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 get something down is 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 is, is the important thing. Um, you know, you can work on it for as long as you like. There's no there's no deadline. Um, but it is a great a great thing, especially now. It's a great thing to have and to fall back on. That um, you're never bored. You know, there's always there's always something to paint. Um, so it's, it's, it, it is, something. and there's some great art directors out there. If I was looking at the work um, that, that I get on my, my news feeds and um, social media, I mean, there's so many advertising guys doing some lovely, lovely stuff. And I think that should be encouraged. There's actually an agency in New York, Emirati Purist, the, where the, the, the reception area is like a gallery. So the whole, all the staff are encouraged to display their work, which I thought was a great wow. idea. Um, that's great. I, th I think having other interests in, in it, it could be a word of advice, in having other interests in this business um, is, a, is a very good thing. You know, my, my dad said to me, you know, my dad, you remember my dad was a pilot. He said, yes. um, he, he said, you know, um, if I have a bad day at the office being a pilot, I kill all the people behind me. He said, if you have a bad day at the office, nobody dies. <laughs> you know, nobody gets sick. Okay. So, uh, um, stop taking yourself so seriously. <laughs> but uh, it's it's so I, I, I suggest, you know, although we are immersed in it, and as I was saying earlier, like everywhere you go, there's design around you, and you keep either wanting to fix it or criticize it. Um, it is a good thing to have other interests, be it music, art, painting, um, even hiking or something. Um, it does keep your sanity um, and keep your job in perspective. No, that's that's so true. I mean, I, I I've done that a, a couple of times where we on shoot and it, it's, it's sort of getting almost out of hand. And you know, the art director's freaking out, and you know, oh, the product hasn't arrived, or there's a scratch on it. And you know, sometimes you just got to say, whoa, relax. You know, take it easy. We're not saving the world. We're taking a fucking picture. Just relax. You yeah, know, it'll all come right. <laughs> and invariably, everybody calms down, and and it does. It, it comes right. You know, and things are things are good. Yeah. So, so Pete, when's the exhibition? Uh, I was hoping uh, towards the end of the year, but now we'll have to see what happens with this lockdown, lockdown stuff. Um, uh, I, th I think it's going to go on for a while, and it, it looks like this, you know, a, a large gatherings are going to be a, a while. Um, but we'll keep working. Yeah. Well, look, we, we, we're planning with the group and I'm, I'm wanting in the Let's Collaborate group, I'm wanting to get an online gallery going. So we'd love to have some of your work on the gallery as well. Um, you know, and that, that might be another option while we can't all move around. And let's show our work on, on the online gallery. And then PGR, yeah, just in yeah, that, sorry, yeah. Um, in closing, I just wanted to say thank you so much. I mean, it's lovely chatting to you and, and, and it's so nice getting all the insights throughout you know your career and and what what and I know people have a lot to learn from it so yeah thanks so much and uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you in a minute soon and enjoy great thanks Malcolm and thanks for the initiative and starting this whole program I think it's uh, collaboration is amazing yeah so awesome enjoy very much okay